by order of the Overseer Council. This file is subject to level 4 classification. Equals equals level 4 clearance is required equals equals. Security clearance adequate. Accessing file. SCP-008.png Ribbon diagram illustrating tertiary structure of SCP-008 Primary amino acid sequence information has been redacted. Item number, SCP-008 The Zombie Plague or This Is Not Thriller Object Class, Euclid Special Containment Procedures, SCP-008 Samples have been deemed Class V Extreme Biological Hazards, and all related protocols apply. Incineration and irradiation measures will be deployed in the event of political or military action which may result in the facility being dismantled, a power failure, or zero communications from operatives or outside channels during any given eight-hour period. The quarantine period for operatives leaving the facility is four months. If a breach has occurred, incineration and irradiation measures shall be deployed. It should be the policy of all G2 sites to not prepare an evacuation procedure. Description, SCP-008 is a complex prion, samples of which are stored in each of the known G2 sites. Research into SCP-008 is highly classified and primarily aimed at preventing research which may lead to the synthesis of SCP-008 in the distant future. Traits of the SCP-008 prion include 100% infectiousness 100% lethality Transmission through exposed mucous membranes and all bodily fluids Not airborne or waterborne Symptoms of infection with SCP-008 manifest no more than 3 hours after exposure, and include Flu-like symptoms with high fever, plus severe dementia in later stages Coma onset approximately 20 hours after first symptoms appear and 12 hours after noticeable dementia. Coma onset will be considered onset of death. A period of sporadic cellular necrosis occurs which comes to resemble gangrene. Surviving tissue assumes its original function and is highly resilient. Red blood cells greatly increase oxygen storage capacity, resulting in slower blood flow and increased muscle endurance and strength. Nervous and muscular systems are unaffected by total organ failure for several hours. Metabolism may decrease to extremely low levels, allowing subject to survive for over 10 years without nutrition. High blood viscosity results in negligible blood flow from gunshot, puncture, and slashing injuries. Conditioned behavior, motor controls, and instinctive behavioral mechanisms are damaged, and cognitive abilities are severely retarded and erratic. Animals experience excessive brain necrosis and are inactive. Subject can adapt to its damaged nervous systems but is limited to basic physical activities, including standing up, balancing on two legs, walking, biting, grabbing, and crawling. Subject will energetically move towards sights, sounds, and smells it associates with living humans. Subject will attempt to ingest living humans if physical contact is made. Neutralizing fully infected subjects requires significant cranial trauma. There is strong evidence to suggest SCP-008 itself did not form naturally on Earth, since variants of similar complexity would have displaced much of the ecosystem. In 1959, a short collaborative effort with the USSR to locate G2 sites and eliminate SCP-008 was negotiated following their discovery. The status of SCP-008 in Russian custody since collaboration ended is unknown. Addendum 008-1, SCP-500 has been found to be able to completely cure SCP-008 even in the advanced stages of the disease. Breakdown, the zombie plague is a tough one to contain once it's out. As the transmission avenues are limitless. Though finding a cure is amazing it's a cure we don't have a lot of and we cannot mass procure it. Also as end of the world scenarios go it would be the slowest and most drawn out of all of them as it would take a really long time for the full world to be taken over. Especially with how all of the militaries are nowadays, maybe 90 to 100 years back would be a different story. The following tale is about how a certain group of interest keeps misusing items and getting foundation personal as well civilians hurt. 
The following after action report has been condensed from the original. Certain data have been redacted for security purposes. A copy of the full report is available at Site 19 for review and archival. Contact your local RASA office for further details. Memorandum for limited release. From, R. Spalding, Commander, Mobile Task Force Beta 5, Babysitters. This after action report is prepared in accordance with RASA Directive 417, Paragraph 3. SEC 2-7 Executive Summary Deployed Location, Happy Acres Youth Camp, W.Y. Deployed CCOs, Task Force Commander Ronald Spaulding, Beta 5 Actual, SCP-105, Iris Thompson, Senior Special Agent Andrea S. Adams Duration of Deployment, 0600 hours 452 through 1800 hours, 12 hours Mission Directives, to evaluate an outbreak of SCP-008 in the wild. Scope of Operations, deploy forward operations base at incident location, investigate area for evidence of SCP-008 outbreak, sterilize area of SCP-008 outbreak if possible. Incident Background A vacation resort operated by Marshall, Carter, and Dark Ltd. Happy Acres Youth Camp is a boutique summer camp operated by Marshall and Carter Holiday in Devers, located in, W.Y. Abutting the nearby Diamond Mountain Resort, one the facility offers a discreet summer getaway for the children of our distinguished clientele. In addition to luxury housing for up to 200 children, counselors, and staff, the resort includes backcountry hiking trails, a mountain bike park, horseback riding ranch, rifle range, paragliding facilities, and helicopter pad. The resort also operates several ski lifts during the winter months, and is well known for the quality of their trails, as well as their luxurious accommodations. Point two. On, two persons entered the emergency room at Hospital in W.Y., carrying an injured child. Persons reported that they were camp counselors at Happy Acres Youth Camp, and that the child had been attacked during the night by some kind of animal. Medical personnel discovered that the child had an unusually elevated fever and signs of cellular necrosis around the injury, symptoms consistent with SCP-008. Marshall, Carter, and Dark representatives reported the incident to a Foundation Representative 3, prompting an immediate alert to Mobile Task Force Beta 7, Maz Hatters. Agents from MTFB-7 arrived under the guise of agents from the Centers for Disease Control, quarantined all persons who had come in contact with the victim, placed patient zero into ad hoc containment, and interrogated witnesses regarding the details of the attack. Meanwhile, other agents from MTFB-7 proceeded to Happy Acres Youth Camp, again under the guise of Centers for Disease Control personnel, and carried out initial containment there. However, a number of children and adult counselors had embarked on an overnight hiking trip the previous afternoon, and had missed their expected return time by over six hours. As MTFB-7 operatives were not sufficiently armed for pacification of an active outbreak of SCP-008, backup was requested under Palisade Broken Menagerie. Force Composition Mobile Task Force Beta-5, Babysitters, is a platoon-level task force consisting of 42, 42, operators, including the task force commander and executive officer. The force consists of 5, 5, squads, numbered 1 through 5. During this deployment, two additional personnel, SCP-105 and Agent Adams, were present as observers, bringing the number of personnel participating in this operation to 44, 44. Initial Deployment MTF Beta 5 was transported to the operations area in 10 vans marked with the livery of the Foundation Cover Organization Species Conservation Project, a conservation and ecological survey group. MTF Beta 5 was handed over command of the operation at 0600 hours. Campgrounds of Happy Acres Youth Camp was designated forward operating base Granada for the purposes of this operation. MTF Beta 5 began preparing the facility for immediate and extended operations. 
Squads 1 and 2 were given the responsibility of setting up perimeter security, blocking off all entrances to the camp and deploying remote sensors at key approaches. Squad 3 unloaded equipment from vehicles and deployed them at the camp's recreation area, Location A. This location was chosen due to its large floor space and secure location. Squads 4 and 5 were given the responsibility of sweeping the rest of the camp for any remaining civilians, including all cabins and staff quarters. No outside personnel were found during this sweep. Command Element established Command and Control Center at the Camp Lodge. This location was chosen for its proximity to the equipment staging area and its secure location. Adjunct personnel were also stationed at the Command and Control Center as outside observers. At approximately 0800 hours, Command Element carried out a visual inspection and determined that all preparations were proceeding satisfactorily. Commencement of Operations At approximately 0830 hours, Command Element conferred with each of the unit commanders regarding the planned course of action. Preferred tactics and strategies for dealing with mass SCP-008 infections were discussed, and all squad leaders were reminded to refamiliarize their squads with these procedures. Squads 1 through 4 were assigned to perimeter security duty, switching off every 4 hours as per standard procedure. Squad 5 was given the special duty of retracing the planned route taken by the missing hikers. Watch schedules and sanitary slash housekeeping slash safety procedures were reviewed at this time, as were communications protocols and contingency plans in case of emergency. Discovery At 1,152 hours, Squad 5 reported contact with two SCP-008 infectees, later identified as two of the four adult counselors in the hiking trip. Infectees were terminated, and marked for later retrieval. Shortly afterwards, Squad 5 reported discovery of a campsite at the planned destination of the missing hikers. The campsite included three, three, three season tents, 20 sleeping bags, a fire pit, and several walking sticks, knives, skewers, and other camping paraphernalia. Of particular concern were indications that the missing campers had been dragged out of their tents by force, rather than devoured in situ. Based on the evidence of an alteration in infectee behavior, the responsible organism was redesignated SCP-008-E, pending further review and analysis. Initial Contact At 1,208 hours, designated marksman Logue reported a number of unknowns walking slowly towards Fob Granada along a dirt road in grid reference D9, several kilometers from the operating base. Further observations indicated 15 unknowns, 7 boys, 8 girls, possible injured, with no sign of the missing adult counselors. Immediately afterwards, multiple contacts were detected by perimeter security elements, totaling over 50, 50, unknowns. The discrepancy in numbers alerted the task force commander of possible complications, including the possibility that bystanders in the area had become infected. Following additional sightings, the estimated number of hostels in the vicinity was increased to over 200, 200. Due to the large number of hostels in the area, it was decided that Squad 5 would not attempt to return to Fob Granada. Squad 5 was ordered to find a secure position and await evacuation at a later time. Task Force Commander consulted with attached observers to determine what aid they could provide. Weapons were provided to the two observers, who set up positions on the rooftop of the camp's ranger station, abutting camper housing. Engagement At 1,329 hours, MTF Beta 7 reported that patient 0 had reproduced by budding. Based on the data at hand, the estimated number of hostels in the area was upgraded to somewhere in the range of 1,000, 1,000, dependent on the average elapsed time between replications. It was at this point that the task force commander declared a palisade rampant beast scenario and requested immediate heavy backup. Shortly thereafter, perimeter security reported that a number of hostels were proceeding towards the FOB at a high rate of speed. Engagement proceeded using standard knights and archers tactics, with squads 1 and 2 providing the bulk of fire from rooftop firing positions, 
while squads 3 and 4 provided security, reinforced by SCP-105. Two engagements took place at 1,356 and 1,519 hours, resulting in numerous enemy casualties, no friendly losses. The largest engagement took place at 1,606 hours, requiring commitment of reserves and a retreat to secondary line of engagement. It was at this point that MTF Beta 5 suffered its only casualty, Agent Logue, broke an ankle due to overly hasty retreat. At 1,703 hours, Mobile Task Force Beta 5 were reinforced by elements of Mobile Task Force New 7, Hammer Down, who proceeded to carry out an in-depth sterilization of the surrounding area. Squad 5 was also retrieved at this time and returned to FOB Granada. At approximately 1,800 hours, Beta 5 officially handed over control of the operating area to MTF New 7 and exfiltrated by helicopter. Post-mission analysis. Aside from the unexpected alterations to SCP-008's capabilities, the operation was a perfect example of superior tactics and flexibility winning out over an opposing force with superior numbers. All members of Mobile Task Force Beta 5 performed admirably, with individual commendations listed in the detailed appendix to this report. The task force commander would like to make particular note of the contribution of the two adjunct observers to the success of this operation, particularly SCP-105, whose immediate response upon the hasty retreat from the first line of engagement at 1606 allowed task force personnel to retreat safely without suffering fatal casualties. However, it is my personal opinion that current operating parameters regarding SCP-008 are inadequate, considering the alterations to the organism. Of particular concern data expunged. If you like this type of content like, comment and subscribe. Let me know down in the comments, I will be doing them in order and adding more of my personal flair to each of the readings. Let me know which is your favorite and I will be sure to add more to that specific one just for you if it's further down the road.